Welcome to the ninth session of Art and Science of Eating. In the last session, uh, we were having a discussion about the health of the intestines and the kidneys. I'll go to the next slide straight forward. Some suggestions. People have been asking me questions right from the beginning, but you'll have to wait until some sufficient amount of syllabus is covered. Uh, in general, questions can be asked about the topics which are already covered. Questions uh, should not be asked about the subject which is going to be covered later on. This is one thing which audience have to keep in their mind. Uh, let us say for example, let us say my son was in primary school. This is a hypothetical example. My son did not ask these questions. I am only telling you. Let us say my son, when he was in primary school, if at all he asks me how a mobile phone works or how a television works, then what I should tell him is that I should tell him come till SSLC, come till PUC, then take science in PUC, then take up BE, in BE take up electronics and communication branch, then in the first year you will study basic electronics, in the second year you will study circuits and devices, in the third year you will study modulations and amplifiers. And when you come to fourth year, you will understand deeply about how a mobile phone works or a television works. Then my son may ask me, okay, for understanding how a television works or how a mobile phone works, I should study all these things for so many years. Then I should tell him, yes, if you want to study or if you want to understand in detail, it takes a sufficient amount of time and you will have to invest your time on that. Same way for my audience, my tip is or my suggestion is, Sometimes for understanding your own body, it may take you a lifetime. For understanding your own mind, it may take another two or three or four or five lifetimes. For understanding your own self, it may take you another five or ten or fifteen or twenty or sometimes hundred lifetimes. That way, uh, I am telling you all these things only because so many people have been asking me so many types of questions. But I have been telling, hold your questions till the end. Maybe at the end of this particular presentation, maybe in future, uh, I may keep one complete session only for uh, answering your questions. Only after you have understood whatever has been covered till now. Okay. So with this introduction, I will start giving some suggestions. Once in a year, undergo Nabhi Purana treatment. Nabhi means navel region. Nabhi Purana treatment. This is one particular treatment in Ayurveda. To expel Apana and to correct Samana. As I told in my earlier session, uh, Prana is at the chest region. Apana is below the navel. Samana is around the navel. Udana is at the head. And Vyana is at the hands and the legs. So, to correct the energy called Samana and to expel the energy called Apana, there is a treatment called Nabhi Purana. When in an empty stomach, lie on the back and instill a lukewarm Mahanarayana Taila. Mahanarayana Taila is one of the very famous medicated oils which is available in Ayurveda. Ayurveda uses lot of medicated oils for specific ailments, there are specific oils. But this particular Mahanarayana Thaila anybody can use even for your Thaila Bhyanga Snana for taking bath using oil also you can use Mahanarayana Thaila. So in this particular Nabhi Purana treatment what you have to do is you have to lie on the back and install a lukewarm Mahanarayana Thaila into the navel region and rest in that position for 30 minutes. So in that particular 30 minutes the medicated oil will slightly get diffused into the navel region and in general whatever is the accumulation of the gas or vata around the navel region uh, it will be cleared because through your navel region only through your umbilical, umbilical cord only nutrition was supplied into your body and there exists a center of uh, circulation that is called solar plexus in the general region, general uh, terminology. So this is one particular 
Nabhipurana treatment. Once in a year you can do it. On your own you can do it. It is quite safe. There is nothing else. You have to lie down on the back and you have to instill a lukewarm Mahanaranatayala until it fills the navel region a little bit. Then rest in that position for 30 minutes. Second suggestion. If your diet does not contain enough fiber and if the food is predominantly solid, I have been telling you your food should be semi-fluid. But if your food is predominantly solid and again if your diet does not contain enough fiber till now if you have been if you not have been using fiber content then you must undergo a purgation therapy by consuming a virechana gulika once in a year. This virechana gulika also called as virechana gutika. In Ayurveda there is a method called panchakarma, panchakarma therapy. Vamana, virechana, basti, nasya, rakta mokshana. These five are called panchakarma therapy. Vamana means by means of vomiting your stomach is being cleansed. Virechana means by means of purgation or one type of diarrhea your intestine is going to be cleansed. So that way vamana, virechana, basti. Basti I had already told you in the last class. Nasya means by means of instilling medicated substance into the nostrils the respiratory tract is being cleansed. Rakta mokshana means wherever there is a toxified blood accumulation in the body by using leeches they take away the uh, dirty blood from the body. That is one type of process. There are other mechanisms to take away the uh, dirty blood from the body also. One easier method is Tailabhyanga. So this is called pancha karma. Vamana virechana bastinasya rakta mokshana. But all the five are not necessary for everybody. In general, they decide out of these five which has to be generally administered. Normally, they go for Vamana and Virechana for uh, uh, everybody in general. Otherwise also, Virechana is a must for everybody if your uh, diet does not contain enough fiber and if the food is predominantly solid. Then people have to go for a purgation therapy. In my next slide, I will show you the pictures about the necessity of a purgation therapy. Virechana Gulika once in a year. After the therapy, consume easily digestible food, soft, semi-solid or liquid food for the next one week. Because during this Virechana therapy, uh, your stomach is pressurized to excrete. In a day, it may be 10 to 12 times. One precaution is, you don't try to take it on your own. Uh, study about it or uh, consult an expert who is around you. But the procedure I will tell you. This pill is available in the Ayurvedic shops. It is called Virechana pill only. There are varieties of Virechana pills in Ayurveda. There are stronger pills and there are mild pills. So this particular pill, once you take it in the morning, then uh, in the empty stomach you have to take it and you have to keep on drinking water every half an hour, every one hour. Either uh, lukewarm water or uh, if it is summer season, Slightly cold water also. But you have to keep on drinking water. Initial 3 to 4 hours, you may not feel anything. But after about 6 hours, the pressure starts in the abdomen. And then, uh, when once you go to the toilet, all the feces in the uh, intestine will go away. But after about 1 more hour or 1 or 2 hours, you will get one more pressure to go to the toilet. Then, uh, intestine will cleanse by itself. Um, other solid materials. Here the thing is, every half an hour to one hour, you have to keep drinking one glass of water. If at all a little bit of salt is added into it, then that is also giving, going to give you a uh, better treatment. This is basically a therapy or a treatment. Now this way it goes on. Maybe four to five times, all the solid waste will go out of the intestine. But you have drunk water since the morning and all the water will be filling in the intestine now. Now gradually the water will start going out. You will, it will it'll tell you to go to toilet every now and then. Maybe in the last, uh, uh, last 10th or 12th time, you may have to stay in the toilet only for nearly half an hour. At that time, all the water which you have drunk will be expelled out through the rectum and not through the urethra. Remember this. In general, water goes to the blood and from the blood it comes to the kidneys, from the kidneys it goes to the urethra. But in this particular treatment, because of this excessive water which is taken as a treatment, 
this will go through the rectum only now at the ending stage the water which goes out of the rectum will be as clean as the water which you had drunk earlier it will be a colorless water whatever water you drank in the same color it will be going out of the rectum now that is an indication that is when this particular process stops later on it will not give you any pressure that is a proof that your complete intestine is cleansed this is one of the very good therapies now if some of the well educated or well civilized audience when they listen to all these things they may laugh at me or some of the sophisticated aristocrats may say what type of dirty treatment is this no this is a cleansing of the intestine in a heavy manner called virechana therapy out of the panchakarma now if you feel dirty or if you feel uh, uh, shameful for all these things then i should tell you that you only made your intestine dirty by your lifestyle you only have to feel shameful that the god given intestine you only toxified over a period of years in general in kannada i keep telling a proverb that betla jana odadu uralli batte hakkondoru muthalru jaha log nanga naachte hain waha kapde pehne walon ko bewakoof kaha jata hai wherever people walk naked if there is a person who uh, walks wearing clothes then he is called as a fool that way it is food is not having fiber food is predominantly solid and uh, for over a period of years the intestine is going to be loaded 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 and then we talk about virechana gulika uh, we talk about keeping the intestine clean then people laugh at us okay but i can't help it i have already told all those things if you are a learner you will keep learning if you are not a learner you will start judging and uh, you have the freedom to do both i cannot suggest more than this so this is virechana gulika the virechana gutika or gulika is not advisable for children children cannot handle that pressure pregnant women and lactating women it is not advisable for them it is not advisable for old people and those having a health problems already related to stomach or abdomen they cannot go for it that type of nearly 10 to 12 times of uh, excretion which happens that pressure you cannot handle that is why it is not recommended for old people but even for old people in ayurveda there are milder virechana therapies that you can always consult a competent ayurveda doctor so my warning to the audience don't do it on your own just like that for an experiment you will not understand the pain when you go through it okay many of my students who have gone through it they know and uh, those who say that ayurveda very slow they will understand if they go through this particular treatment they will know whether ayurveda is slow or ayurveda is fast one small pill is going to make such a wonderful therapy for you so if at all you decide to go for this particular therapy well in advance plan for it and next day after this therapy or treatment is over for the next one week you will have to keep consuming only digestible food i have told you digestible food like pongal or khichdi or very fluid semi solid liquid food only you will have to consume for next one week because uh, because of that it is like uh, overhauling of your vehicle uh, because of the continuous pressure in the intestine intestine would have undergone in a stress there it would have become more and more elastic there so it also requires a rest so don't do this on your own for fun it is not fun as such you will have to have an expert advice or somebody who has already gone through this therapy they must be there to help you or to guide you if at all something goes wrong let us say let us say the diarrhea does not stop let us say this excretion even after 16 times 20 times if it does not stop let us say for some people it happens then the best remedy is immediately to drink butter milk if you drink butter milk then this purg and this purgation will stop but again i repeat i repeat i repeat don't do this thing on your own this is my suggestion that you have to go through it once in a year but not completely on your own alternatively let us say this is a tough thing virechana is a tough thing alternatively safely what you can do is once in a month buy the swadishta virechana churna it is available 
स्वादिष्ट विरेचन चूर्ण इज मैनुफैक्चर्ड बै सो मेनी आयुर्वेदिक फार्मस्यूटिकल कंपनी स्वादिष्ट मीन इट इज स्वीट इट इज नाट बिटर इन टेस्ट विरेचन मीन इट इज पर्गेशन थेरपी यू कैन कंस्यूम दि स्वादिष्ट विरेचन चूर्ण अलांग विथ वाटर आफ्टर ब्रेक्फास्ट यू विल हव टू स्टे एट होम ओनली नौ वन यू कंस्यूम दि स्वादिष्ट विरेचन चूर्ण यू विल हव टू स्टे एट होम ओनली If at all you are going for this virechana gulika, you will have to stay at home for two days. Okay. If it is Swadesh te virechana churna, you will have to stay at home only. After the breakfast, consume this. A much easier per. This is okay. I'll go to the next one later. Uh, uh, after the breakfast, just take this one teaspoonful of Swadesh te virechana churna and put it into the mouth and drink one glass of water, either cold water or lukewarm water. After about uh, four hours or after about six hours, you will have mild excretions. You will have only two to three times in a day. That's all. That way, this is much safer than virechana gutika. Another much easier purgative is to consume two teaspoon of ghee mixed in one glass of hot milk. Just put a two teaspoon of cow's ghee into one glass of hot milk in the early morning after breakfast and simply drink it. After about four to five hours. You will have a pressure to excrete, or you can also have a a sub gol soaked in milk, and before going to sleep, you can soak a sub gol for about five minutes, where it will sink into the milk. It will become much softer. Then drink that complete milk before going to sleep. This is also a good uh, purgation therapy, very mild therapy. Anybody can do it. Even children can do it. Even old people can do it. The last one which I am telling you. Two teaspoon of ghee mixed in one glass of hot milk or isab gol soaked in milk. These can be tried before going to sleep. Even the Swadesh Tevrechana Churan also even old people can try. Why I am telling all these things? You will see it in the next slide. You are seeing a red blood cell, and you are seeing a red blood cell affected by a toxin. This is a toxic. Germ. It may be a germ or it may be a toxic element. It may be a toxic substance which has gone inside the blood. Now this will start creeping into the red blood cell. Some day it will completely swallow the red blood cell. It will completely toxify the red blood cell itself. The same thing may happen inside the intestine also. The same thing may happen in the blood stream also. You just can uh, see how this small element is affecting. the red blood cell i am coming to the colon look at the colon this is your colon or your small intestine or large intestine you can see the scaling here due to continuous eating of the uh, all those maida related products or continuous eating of the solid foods if it is half digested it will remain here half digested ama this is called ama that remains around the intestine and if it is not flushed out it will remain there gradually it will lead to scaling it should not happen that is why i told you about a purgation therapy now look at this this is a cleansed intestine where after the purgation therapy you can see the circulation inside the intestine is increased due to this is reddish in color just look at this here the red blood cell is affected same way let us say the red blood cell is here in the intestine wall even those red blood cells will be affected intestine will be losing its slippery nature and intestine will be losing about its ability to absorb the nutrients into the blood itself but now look at this here there is a clean circulation inside the intestine due to which all the nutrients of the blood will be uh, absorbed into the uh, sorry nutrients in the intestine will be absorbed into the blood this is the advantage of purgation therapy now at least looking at this picture don't laugh about whatever i told about few minutes before about the excretion therapy there are other safe methods of colon cleansing this you have to do multiple times throughout the day with very light food or no food at all here also you have to stay at home only for one full day only when you are hungry you will have to consume food one method is consumption of the ground flax seed take a flax seed slightly fry it on a pan without the oil then crush it uh, using a mixi that ground flax seed you keep on consuming with water multiple times maybe three times four times or five times 
वन मोर मेथड इज कंजम्पन ऑफ सॉल्ट डिजॉर्व इन वार्म वाटर मे बी थ्री टाइम्स फोर टाइम्स फाइव टाइम्स बट यू टू बी केयरफुल यू शुड नॉट एड अ लॉट ऑफ सॉल्ट दैन द सेम सॉल्टिश वाटर कम्स इन टू द इंटस्टाइन एंड ग्रेजुअली इट स्टार्ट क्लिनसिंग द इंटस्टाइनल वॉल another method is consumption of ginger plus honey plus lemon juice that ginger honey lemon juice it is not in the empty stomach it is after your breakfast what happens is ginger honey and lemon juice comes here in the intestinal wall and this ginger has a uh, cleansing ability of the intestine that's why i had told this should not be taken in empty stomach it will disturb your stomach itself here our purpose is not to cleanse the stomach the purpose is to cleanse the intestine so consumption of ginger or honey or lemon juice lastly you can consume aloe vera gel also along with the lemon juice so in the previous slide i had showed one is virechana gulika next is swadishta virechana churna this is after breakfast then otherwise before going to sleep 2 teaspoon of ghee mixed in one glass of hot milk or is up gold soaked in milk otherwise these are the other options all these options are one and the same don't ask me which one is best all these options are one and the same result is the same except for the virechana gutika all other things are one and the same so out of these four methods any comfortable method which you feel like you can go through it final purpose is that you will have to get your colon cleanse like this it if it is like this if it remains like this you can see it is unable to absorb any nutrients from the food so whatever food you eat it is simply going out so your colon must be looking like this about dinacharya there is a question here why the consumption of green chilies is harmful for us you have the answer with you if green chili is directly put into your mouth what is the taste of it is it harmful or is it nutritious you only tell me something which is causing a harm when it is inside the mouth how it can be helpful for your health that is the common sense in nature you will not find any substance the taste bud when you taste it if it is pleasant then only you will consume it let us say you are putting green chilies into your mouth and when you are tasting it do you feel pleasant or do you feel hot which simply means that the green chilies are not meant as a food if you keep using green chilies think about the harm which causes when it goes into the stomach in the mouth itself if it is causing so much of burning sensation what all harm it will do when it goes to stomach when it goes to small intestine i just told one proverb a few minutes before that बेतले जन ओडाड़ ऊर बट्टे हकंड मुठाड़ जहां लोग नंगा नाचते हैं वहां कपड़े पहने वालों को बेवकूफ कहा जाता है वेर वर पीपल वॉक नेकेड वेर द पर्सन हु वेर द ड्रेस इज कॉल्ड एज अ फूल सेम वे एवरी वेर एवरीबडी इज यूजिंग ग्रीन चिलीज विदाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग दी प्रॉब्लम विच दे फेस इन साइड बट दिस इज अ कॉमन सेंस दैट ग्रीन चिलीज आर नॉट पार्ट ऑफ अवर फूड दे स्टार्टेड यूजिंग इट फॉर their own various other reasons that is the answer that is enough i cannot explain more than that dinacharya i will repeat whatever i have been telling from the beginning of these presentations morning ushappana you remember that water kept in copper vessel keep the water in copper vessel uh overnight if you want buy a lavancha in the grandike shops lavancha is available or put one or two tulsi leaves or if you have rudrakshi at home put this rudrakshi in that copper vessel rudrakshi has a property of cleansing water tulsi has a property of cleansing water even lavancha has a property of cleansing water you can keep it in a copper vessel uh copper has a property of disinfecting the water copper's ions copper slightly releases metallic ions copper is a very good conductor so when it releases uh, metal ions these ions have the ability to uh, kill the germs which are there in the water 
more about it study the latest nanotechnology where they prove that the copper vessel or even the swarna prashana in ayurveda how it is helping for the health of the uh, beings that is now proved through the nanotechnological research so keep the water in a copper vessel add a one or two threads of lavancha or one or two leaves of tulsi or one simple rudrakshi and put it there this rudrakshi will never get spoiled rudrakshi will remain inside the water even if you keep it 24 hours also rudrakshi will not get spoiled so next day morning use this water for ushappana later on perform bowel evacuation later this i have already told you earlier next danta dhavana slowly go for brushing your teeth with the herbal tooth powder or a herbal tooth paste regarding this i am going to tell you only in the next presentation in detail always use a soft tooth brush don't go for a hard tooth brush which is available in the market your teeth are not made out of concrete or cement or steel your teeth are made out of calcium with an enamel coating uh just by looking at the tv advertisements where somebody puts a sugar cane into his mouth and pulls it don't try out all that i'm again telling you teeth are teeth only teeth are not steel or cement or concrete take care of the teeth unnecessarily don't use a hard toothbrush and don't keep on brushing for 5 minutes your tooth brushing activity should be over within 3 minutes sometimes people keep on brushing sitting in the living room looking at the television they keep on brushing very bad habit those gums are made out of skin and muscle teeth is having a enamel covering so there should not be long term activity of brushing within 3 minutes the brushing of the teeth must be over not with the hard tooth brush but with the soft tooth brush now the tooth powder or paste must be astringent pungent and or bitter the tooth powder or paste should not be sweet in taste if it is sweet in taste in what way it is going to kill the germs because the germs got produced in the mouth because of the consumption of sweets only now if the tooth paste also is sweet in taste how it can kill the germs this is again a common sense so the tooth powder or the tooth paste must be either astringent or it must be pungent or bitter that is why dabar red tooth powder tooth paste baba ramdev's patanjali tooth paste kp nambudiri's tooth powder tooth paste all these tooth powder tooth paste start using them again i am telling by swadeshi encourage swadeshi and remain healthy keep on buying the herbal tooth paste only ayurvedic tooth paste only don't go for other unnecessarily technically uh, hyped brands it's of no use it's a common sense again i repeat tooth powder and paste must be either astringent or pungent or bitter then only they are going to cleanse your mouth effectively that's why i had told you about that mitti se product mitti se tooth powder a very good tooth powder it has a healing property also it has a cleansing property also after that if you have this habit of meditating or if you have the habit of yoga asana practice it then go for taking a bath then consume your breakfast this is in the morning lunch as i told you i cannot tell you or i cannot force you that you should have such type of lunch only many times people don't have their freedom but as much as possible conventional regional vegetarian food as per your choice take a small nap after lunch 15 minutes maximum i keep doing this in my staff room many times many of my colleagues watch me and uh, they may think that how the hair he sleep uh, in the staff room but this is my own method of giving a break to my body i don't sleep heavily but i go for a small nap sitting in the chair itself many times uh, i have been ridiculed uh, by my earlier colleagues many years before they used to ridicule me also but it does not bother me much because i am keeping myself healthy uh, i keep again telling that you will not be able to understand me as such so don't try to understand me your own your own issue here is you try to understand yourself only you understand yourself better you live better that's all 
don't try to understand me it may not be possible for you to understand me as such ultimately in life when it is very difficult for us to understand ourselves how can we think that we will be able to understand others also okay so i take a small nap after lunch every day about 15 minutes maximum i don't really sleep because after a lunch uh, circulation flows predominantly towards the belly only at that time we should not give a lot of work to our brain we should understand our body that is why taking a small nap after lunch is very good for health consume one glass of buttermilk after lunch every day if possible do this consume one glass of buttermilk after lunch every day in sanskrit there is a small saying that takram shakrasya durlabham takram means buttermilk shakra means indra they say that even in the heaven to indra buttermilk is not available in the bhuloka buttermilk is prepared by human beings this takra or buttermilk is a very good healing uh, substance regarding this i am going to tell again in the next slide so if possible consume one glass of buttermilk after lunch every day evening i have told you already about panchamrata about herbal tea and kashaya i am going to tell you later regarding kesar milk i have already told you don't consume any that type of snacks regularly like such as uh, samosa kachori pani puri masala dosa bende dosa davangere dosa no medicine ka bonda bajje vade no maybe once in a week or maybe twice in a month that's okay but not in a regular basis don't consume all those things just remember the picture i had told you in the previous slide think about your intestine and think that if at all you consume all those things what will happen to the intestine gradually please understand that so panchamrata herbal tea kashaya or kesar milk if you have time in the evening and if you are into the yogic practices i strongly recommend that all of you get into the yogic practices it is high time that indians understand the indian wealth yoga ayurveda vedanta these three are the indian wealth let the indians understand the indian wealth let them start practicing these sacred things so if at all you are into pranayama perform pranayama after 30 minutes of this consumption in general morning we can practice yogasana evening we can practice pranayama that has been my method also if you have overeaten or uneasy stomach if you have frequent flatus where gas is going out then better you go to the toilet and evacuate your bowels once again before supper now if you have uneasy stomach or frequent flatus with the same frequent flatus don't consume supper and don't go to bed because you are giving a chance for the gas to remain inside your intestine for the next 6 to 8 hours when you are sleeping on the bed so let the intestine be not loaded with the toxic gas when you go to sleep at night better evacuate your bowels once again before supper supper is in general soups salads vegetable salads or soaked or sprouted pulses millet or wheat dosa or steamed food boiled legumes or corms and fruits don't consume a conventional heavy supper you can have a heavy breakfast you can have a heavy lunch as much as possible reduce the supper content and in supper don't again use lot of rice or lot of roti or lot of such things don't load your stomach before you go to sleep your stomach must be less loaded and if you are hungry then only have supper i have been telling again from the beginning breakfast like a king lunch like a farmer supper like a beggar cultivate that habit otherwise heavy supper which you consume that only is going to be converted into fat and that is when the liver also will become fatty body also will become fatty as much as possible consume such simple foods such as meat dosa or wheat dosa steamed food boiled legumes or you have your own idea of having a simple supper in your own way 
chew fennel and later drink a little amount of water when you chew fennel after supper again uh, you are cleansing the teeth cleansing the mouth this is a very good practice this is the whole summary of dinacharya or your uh, day to day activity from morning till night how it has to be i have given you a uh, general picture you can slightly modify all this on your own you apply your own common sense you apply your own intelligence or apply your own wisdom you need not follow whatever i say 100% but if you don't follow this then your lifestyle will not change your health will not change you will be the same person as you were earlier there will be no change this is a wagon food pyramid look at this 8 to 10 glasses of a day if you are active drink more water he is saying but i have told you already don't unnecessarily drink water all these slides i am taking from uh, internet university okay that is why i as i am not preparing my own slides for all that there will be such small small issues here but i am telling you you should not drink water unnecessarily now you should eat this liberally the fruit group of 2 to 4 servings you have to eat it liberally god created fruits and vegetables only as our primary food so we should have a common sense to consume all these fruits and vegetables in our daily life this should be generous or this should be liberal now next is whole grains bread rice and pasta cereal group this is eat generously fruits should be liberally at least 50% should be fruits and vegetables next around 25 to 30% maybe all these cereals all these cereals are carbs or carbohydrates so i have been telling more and more consumption of carbohydrate is the primary reason for the increase in the number of diabetes patients eating only rice eating only wheat not eating other things is the primary reason over a period of many decades people have been doing this if you eat only rice only wheat then more and more of carbohydrates and you are not burning it you are not working out then gradually it will remain glucose in the blood gradually some day blood uh, blood will have higher percentage of glucose then they will say you have got diabetes then they will simply blame it on heredity so as much as possible increase fruits and vegetables but you should have cereals carbohydrates are necessary because carbohydrate only will become glucose glucose only will yield calories that is energy but carbohydrates percentage should not be more than the percentage of fruits and vegetables all the uh, tris elements or micronutrients such as all vitamins and minerals are available in these fruits and vegetables now the third one is legumes seeds beans group 2 to 3 servings eat moderately or fortified dairy substitutes also eat moderately why eat moderately these are all proteins now you should not have excess protein also protein is only for uh, const constructing the muscles now protein is like a cushion now that also should not be excess again common sense see these grains were not created by god for human consumption neither the legumes and seeds are created by god for human consumption humans are evolved from apes so god created directly fruits and vegetables as a direct consumption all these grains and cereals birds directly consume <coughs> that is again a common sense but now as we are not completely fruitarians now you may think how can we survive only by consuming fruits we can survive only by consuming fruits people have done it in usa one particular family for complete one year they consumed only fruits and they were healthy and they proved it that we can survive only by consuming fruits it is possible but as i told you there is a social conditioning you will say that are we just apes or monkeys or gorillas to keep on eating only fruits we are civilized human beings you will say that people have been socially conditioned to use food grains i have told you the reason why they started uh, storing these uh, legumes and uh, cereals 
The simple reason is by means of agriculture, we can grow them, we can store them for months together, then we can boil them, we can consume them. Fruits, we cannot store them that way for months together. That was the primary reason. Instead of daily going for searching for food, they developed the art or skill of agriculture. That is when they predominantly started consuming more of legumes and cereals. Otherwise, we cannot consume them directly. That is why you can see the percentage is lesser here. Protein must be lesser than carbohydrate and fiber and vitamins and minerals. Here also even fruits also have enough of carbohydrate content and even fruits also have enough of fiber content and protein content also is there. So reduce this and at the top you have very less percentage of vegetable oils and fats, some sweets, salt, spices and nuts use them sparingly. Somebody has done this pyramid very beautifully. Except for the last part of where water, if you keep drinking, yeah, if you are active, you should drink more. That is natural because water gets lost by sweating. But if you are not physically active that way, you should not drink water unnecessarily. So this is a very beautiful food pyramid, which some wise person has prepared. And I have just copied here in the slide. There are people who have made a raw food pyramid also. That means no need of cooking as such. People have tried to live this way also. Why should we cook food? No oil, no boil. They used to say, we don't use oil, we don't boil anything. We can consume food directly as it is. So they have tried. Leafy greens, they'll make salads out of it. They'll not boil them. They'll not cook them. They'll make salads out of it. Directly they can consume these leafy greens or leafy greens vegetables. These are foundation foods which has to be consumed generously. Fruits and vegetables, these are foundation fruits. Now sprouts and legumes, nuts, seeds, these are proteins, amino acids, they have to be consumed moderately. Now seaweed or nutritional yeast or herbs or microgreens or wheatgrass juice, these are all medicinal things. This is the, uh, these are the uh, medicinal plants used in the western side. In the eastern side, we have our own medicinal plants such as ashwagandha, shatavari or curry leaf, all those things. Later, I am going to show all that. So, these are medicinal foods. Along with the regular food, there must be a little bit of medicinal content so that the food will not decay in the intestine. I have been telling in Kannada, until certain age, this body will grow. After a certain age, this body will decay internally. To prevent that decay internally, only when there is a decay, there is increase of the germs there. If you do not allow the germs to multiply by keeping a non-decaying atmosphere inside the intestine or in the blood, then the germ will have no chance to multiply in your body. That is the reason in our food there must be some amount of medicinal content. I am going to tell you later about it, but please understand, these are the foundation foods, leafy green vegetables and foods, uh, fruits, fruits and vegetables. Then these nuts and seeds, sprouts and legumes are, uh, should be consumed moderately. Then the medicinal foods have to be consumed sparingly. Buttermilk for treating Agnimandya. I have been telling about uh, digestive fire or digestive power. I have been telling about the mucosal layer in the stomach and I have been telling about the secretion of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Now how to keep up the efficiency of the stomach? That is when this buttermilk has a healing property of the stomach. That's why I have put on it here treating of Agnimandya. Agnimandya means lack of digestion. Lack of digestion will lead to Ama. Ama will have undigested food which is accumulated around the intestine. Buttermilk can be flavored in one of the following ways. Add crushed ginger, curry leaves and lemon juice. This is one way. Or else add cumin seeds, crushed garlic and crushed onion. This is another way. Or temper with curry leaves, mustard seeds and dry chilies. Dry uh, red chilies, not dry green chilies. This is another way. You can choose any one of them for variety. Garnish with coriander leaves. Don't add green chilies. I repeatedly tell. Don't add green chilies. If salt is required, use rock salt instead. Sain Dhavalavana is available. Use it. For better results, you can use asafated also, which is of herbal origin. 
assafoetida ssp assafoetida one of the best assafoetida available in the market you can start using assafoetida along with the buttermilk to increase your digestive power or digestive strength if you have followed my suggestions you would have found out which uh, which humor you belong to whether it is vata or pitta or kapha that details i have already told you earlier if you have found out then if you are predominantly vata or pitta or kapha there is a method to consume buttermilk also let us say gas in the body is increased that means vata prakopa let us say you are suffering from gastritis then use buttermilk along with the sindhava lavana with the rock salt let us say pitta prakopa you are suffering from excessive heat then you can consume buttermilk along with the rock sugar and if it is kapha prakopa let us say you are suffering from excessive cold then you can consume buttermilk along with the trikatu churna this trikatu churna is available in all ayurvedic shops so buttermilk itself is the healing agent it is going to cleanse the complete digestive system and for each specific humor either sindhava lavana or rock sugar or trikatu churna can be used don't consume curd or buttermilk when hungry hunger will increase because it is going to increase the digestive power it is going to increase the agni so when you are hungry don't consume curd that is why curd rice always comes at the end or buttermilk always comes at the end not at the beginning so don't consume curd or buttermilk when hungry it gets increased hunger gets increased similarly don't consume them after evening in your supper you should not have curd or buttermilk that's a very bad practice reason is both curd or buttermilk they are fermented they are like emulsifiers so in the fermented condition if you consume them at night the fermentation in the stomach is going to increase so if at all you have consumed it during lunch or during breakfast let us say in the in the daytime if you have done it already it has settled in large intestine now but if you consume it at night it will go through the digestive system once again so that fermented food item should not be consumed uh, during supper or after evening this again arvinda is not saying this is directly ayurveda is saying charaka samhita itself is saying i have something in the chat box let me see what can we eat fruits before or after food you can consume fruits after food actually food itself fruits are itself are food only but if you are uh, talking about the regular rice or chapati or all that then you consume fruits after food only not before food okay this is a funny slide 2000 years before christ they used to say here eat this root 1000 years after christ they said that root is heathen here say this prayer then 1865 ad that prayer is superstition here drink this potion they used to give potions 1935 ad after the pharmaceuticals came into picture that potion is snake oil here swallow this pill they started giving pills 1975 ad they said that pill is ineffective here take this antibiotic now 2000 ad they say that antibiotic is poison here eat this root so where we have come in the 4000 years of medicine we have come back to nature again we know that antibiotics are poisonous pills are poisonous and we have come back to root so our uh, uh, dr giridhar kaje used to say ayurveda treats diseases from the root ayurveda treats diseases with the root he used to say this is 4000 years of medicine it is high time that indians understand the value of ayurveda which is not an alternative medicine it is a native medicine okay there have been many questions regarding medicine let me tell now food's purpose is nourishment medicine's purpose is treatment and food's purpose is its consumption is regular 
मेडिसिन शुड बी कंज्यूम्ड ओनली ड्यूरिंग सिकनेस फूड क्वांटिटी कैन बी लार्जर मेडिसिन शुड बी लेसर एंड फूड इट्स नेचर इज नॉन टॉक्सिक वेर एज मेडिसिन इज टॉक्सिक वेदर इट इज आयुर्वेदिक मेडिसिन आर होम्योपैथिक मेडिसिन आर एनी मेडिसिन सिद्ध मेडिसिन आर यूनानी मेडिसिन आर अलोपैथिक मेडिसिन विच एवर मेडिसिन मेडिसिन इज ऑलवेज हार्मफुल ओनली टॉक्सिक ओनली दैट इज वाई मेडिसिन हैव टू बी लेसर इन परसेंटेज एंड एक्सपीरियंस वेन यू कंज्यूम फूड एक्सपीरियंस इज प्लेजेंट वेन यू कंज्यूम मेडिसिन इट इज अनप्लेजेंट द सोर्स ऑफ फूड इज प्लांट्स एंड ट्रीज द सोर्स ऑफ मेडिसिन इज नेचर एज सच वी ऑब्टेन अवर फूड फ्रॉम plants and trees but medicine directly from any stone also shilajit shilajit is one of the medicines which baba ramdev has made it famous shilajit was there from the beginning in ayurveda that is a small resin like substance being secreted in the rock and that is collected and given as a medicine so there are many such things in general in nature whatever is available they have tried out all that so source of medicine is nature as such source of food is plants and trees even in ayurveda even in homeopathy they use a lot of plant related products most of these plant related products if they are directly consumed heavily they are toxic even in ayurveda even in homeopathy actually in homeopathy they use lot of rare plants items and all these rare plants are not consumable plants you cannot consume their flowers or fruits directly they are all basically toxic plants from them this is extracted the medicinal content is extracted and in a small small percentage it is uh, administered into the body that is why the source of medicine is nature as such in the siddha medicine they use even stones there is something called navapashana navapashana means nine types of stones the stone item also they use for medicine in mild quantities or in smaller quantities so health risk is there when the food is in excess health risk is there when the medicine is ingested itself health risk is there if the medicine directly goes there is a serious health risk that is why all the medicines have to be consumed in general only after food not before food if at all before food is some medicine is given that medicine is not toxic it may be a promotive or healthy item maybe for increasing the digestive strength it is given before food otherwise in general all the medicines are only after food and not before food what is the reason for sickness look at this slide and keep on looking at it i'll give one minute pause okay sickness is mainly due to two reasons strain and infection now strain is again due to two reasons physical and mental infection is again due to two reasons food and breath now strain physical strain let us say non stop working 12 hours a day 14 hours a day non stop working it is a physical strain not taking adequate rest then it is a physical strain due to the physical strain body will get exhausted and if this becomes a habit then due to the strain there will be sickness if there is a mental strain always a mental pressure then because of the mental strain in fact the brain requires nearly 25% of the energy that is produced by the body now there is a heavy mental strain or pressure then the brain will get depleted of energy then gradually because of which headache and headache gradually becomes migraine and it becomes some other bigger thing in future so due to mental strain again sickness so the best remedy is that if there is a physical strain take optimum rest if there is a mental strain go for an introspection ask yourself why are you worried why are you under stress why are you under pressure ask yourself many times we don't plan our activities properly we don't uh, plan our time also and uh, why do we wait until the nth moment until the water comes till the neck 
why don't we bother that most of the time the people's problem is they'll keep on postponing a few things which have to be done on a daily basis if you keep on planning your time regularly if you keep on accomplishing whatever is supposed to be finished then uh, you will have a very healthy brain circuit there is a hormone gets secreted in the brain called dopamine this dopamine will have its own circuitry of completing a task if any task is left half then the dopamine circuit is incomplete then gradually that gets developed in the stress because whatever is pending you will keep remembering even if you want to forget also you will be anyhow remembering once you remember the incomplete tasks you will have more and more of stress and pressure so the main thing is introspect yourself why are you getting worried what is it worrying you my dear friends i'll tell you one simple tip never compare yourselves with others never never compare yourselves with others we are all uniquely made you will not find a person just like you in the whole of this earth whether it is physical appearance or whether it is a voice whether it is nature or whatever way pinde pinde matir bhinnaha kunde kunde navam payaha jatav jatav navacharaha nava vani mukhe mukhe pinde pinde matir bhinnaha head to head intelligence is different kunde kunde navam payaha pond to pond the taste of water is different jatav jatav navacharaha caste to caste the customs and the lifestyles are different nava vani mukhe mukhe every mouth the speech is different the tone is different the voice is different the vocal cords are different the speech frequency itself is different you will not find a person on this whole of earth who is having the same frequency like you everybody's voice is different if that is the case why do you compare yourselves with others only when we compare we have problem there when we compare ourselves with others either vitamin m or vitamin j these are the two harmful vitamins vitamin m is comparison in terms of money and vitamin j is in terms of jealousy these are the main two unhealthy vitamins they cannot be called as vitamins i am just naming them that way these are the things which are causing this mental pressure i have been uh, observing this society in a different angle around me there are so many lower class people also middle class people also upper class people also i stay at maleshwaram here i see lower class people also middle class people also upper class people also very near uh, there is a area called sadashivanagar where upper class people are there i just observe their lifestyles a laborer or a lower class person or a vegetable vendor or a flower vendor even ladies are vegetable vendors and flower vendors they may earn 3000 rupees per month and they will have a lifestyle which will accommodate 3000 rupees per month the middle class persons may have around 30000 rupees per month and with that 30000 rupees per month they will accommodate the upper class people will have 3 lakhs per month and they will have their lifestyle 3 lakhs rupees per month now the person who is at the lower class if the monthly salary or monthly income is let us say 3000 rupees their problems will be 300 rupees let us say 30000 salary their problems will be 3000 rupees let us say 3 lakh rupees income they will have a problem of 30000 rupees this is related that is what murphy says in one of his funny laws he says expenditure rises to meet the income he says this way funnily it is not that the income rises to meet the expenditure expenditure rises to meet the income means the more you earn the more you want to spend somehow by comparing ourselves with others we want to spend my dear friends don't spend unnecessarily save that money for future and that is how you will have a stress free life i understood this long back that whatever is the hard earned money let me save it let me not show off and whenever i had a troublesome situation in life i never went to any bank for taking loan even till now i have not taken any loan from any bank if at all there was a crisis then i used to lend money only from my friends some of my close friends or some of my yoga students also helped me at the time of crisis 
but i have never gone to any big loan because i have been saving money for the future so if at all you develop all these well planned habits in your life you will never have mental strain so introspect yourself you are the cause for your own sorrow or grief stop comparing yourself with others that is the first point you will have to do for any which reason don't try to compare yourself with others if you want to compare yourself you compare yourself with the people who are more happier than you don't compare yourself with the people who are sadder than you in general what we do is we keep on counting the number of sadness and happiness and we try to measure it if at all you want to compare yourself you compare yourself with the people who have a better lifestyle than you they are more healthy than you then find out why are they having a better health i'll tell a small story now one person in a village thought one day he was an intellectual person one day he thought one day that uh, let me go to the surrounding villages all the way and uh, just for my curiosity let me count the population in this particular area so he took a notebook and a pen he counted the number of people in his own village then he packed some food along with himself he went for a small trip he went to all the villages in the eight directions around his village and he visited all those villages and he noted down the number of people in all those villages and he was satisfied that in the total area there he has counted the number of people who are right now there and then he started coming back to his village on the way there was a forest when he was crossing the forest below the tree he saw one monk sitting and meditating so in that book he added plus 1 now the monk opened his eyes and asked him what are you doing then this person said i have been counting the number of people in my own village and the adjacent villages now i have a total count of people who are around me you are sitting in the forest so i simply put plus 1 then the monk laughed at him and told him my dear friend don't include me in that population list then this person asked why then the monk said i stay in this forest i don't go anywhere else i live here only whether i am here or i am not here it is not going to make a difference in your life so you don't have to count me as such even though i am living i am as good as dead for others so i have no other relations also so you don't have to count me okay the person said okay and the person laughed at the monk and he went back to his village when he went back to the village after about few years maybe one or two years he thought i have gone to all these villages and have counted the number of people now let me prepare a map so that let us all establish good relationship among each other let us let all of us can meet each other now i know the route map for all those other villages they may not be knowing all that it is better that i create a route map and it distribute everywhere to all the villages so he made a road map route map and he made many copies of it he again went back to all those villages and distributed among all those people and he told them let us all have a harmonious lifestyle let us all keep meeting each other and you can use this map for going to different places and while he was coming back on the way he went to the same forest the monk was there he told him do you want a map i have prepared a map painstakingly and i have distributed to all other people do you want to have a map then the monk said my dear friend last time only i had told you you don't have to include me in your population list also i don't want map also because i don't go anywhere else i just sit here in the forest i keep meditating that's all when i don't go anywhere else there is no use of a map for me and this person laughed at the monk and he go, went back to village after about a few years this person he thought uh, let me see now how these people are living because i have a map now i have given the map to them also let me verify and he went around a trip for all those villages and he saw that many people are suffering due to many health related ailments and he was feeling pity that people are having these health ailments people are sick at many places so he was coming back when he was coming back he met the monk once again 
and uh, monk asked him why are you sad this time you have been cheerful in the last two times why are you sad this time then the person said i went to all the villages and i met all my other older friends i am seeing that uh, many of them are uh, uh, suffering due to many health related ailments also and i am feeling pity for them don't you feel pity he asked the monk now the monk said my dear friend i am here only i don't meet anybody else i don't compare myself with anybody else so i don't know what what lifestyle they are living so it is not my botheration to worry about them i worry only about myself now this person said you say that you are a monk and you don't have compassion for the people what type of monk you are then the monk said please leave me for myself i am in the forest you only keep coming here and disturbing me you can go back to your village then the person went back to village when he went back to village he was still feeling sadness about the all the people sufferings and he studied a lot of health related books medicine related books on his own and he developed some methodologies about how we can remain healthy by using uh, nature's medicinal uh, items and he wrote a book about a healthy lifestyle and healthy medicines and he printed this book and he went to all those villages and gave this book to everybody there they were all happy that he is helping them all the way on the way when he was coming back he met the monk and he told him i have done this great work i have written a book about healthy lifestyle and healthy medicines which are available in nature do you want to have a copy now the monk said i don't go anywhere i don't eat anything else whatever is available in this forest that is what i am eating that is how i am surviving and i don't have any health issues at all when i don't have any health issues why do i want your book you can keep your book the man laughed at the monk and he went back to village in this way many years over after many years one day the same person again thought let me go for a population count now i went almost 30 40 years before for a general population count let me go around all those villages and let me take a population count let me see how people are living now so he went all the way and he was very happy that in all those villages people were living very healthy and he was so happy and when he counted when he was coming back he made a total and the total number was almost double whatever was the population earlier now the population is double he became so sad now the village is full of people more and more people everywhere more and more people everywhere population has increased now if population is increased this will become a bigger problem in future because the same double will become quadruple quadruple will become eight times just think about india when we had a um, uh, freedom independence the population of india was 40 crores now it is nearing 140 crores that is our capacity or ability to increase the population in this way but how much wise we are how much respect we have for our nation or uh, have we really understood the wealth of this nation have we really understood the meaning of the word bharata that is questionable now so this person was unhappy that population has increased so much when he was coming back he met the same monk this person was again upset now the monk asked him why are you upset man last time you were so happy that you were given all health to people and they are all living healthy now why you are upset now the person said there is a increased population population is more than double now everywhere there are people now there are a lot of fights and quarrels now because of the increased competition there are fights and quarrels and they are all uh, stupidly living foolishly living whatever type of suggestions i give now they don't respect me at all they don't care for my advices at all they are all grown up now i am upset now i don't know how to solve this problem now the monk said you are the root cause of the problem this person said how am i the root cause of the problem why are you blaming me how did i cause this problem then the monk said they were there just like that in their own villages whether they were suffering or sad or sick or healthy in whatever way they were living you went around you only gave them maps when you only gave them maps using the map they started moving everywhere 
when they started moving everywhere they only built up relationships everywhere when they built up relations were everywhere we don't know where are they moved and what all relations they had in different places now later on you only went everywhere you only gave them tips for healthy lifestyle you don't only gave them tips for using natural medicines that is how these people became fit and healthy also they multiplied also when you only gave them healthy tips when they became fit when they became multiplied when they migrated to different places when they increased their number now why are you so sad now the person said i did all for their welfare only now the monk said why did you take a responsibility of their welfare on yourself have you taken a contract on yourself that their welfare you will manage it is up to them to understand themselves and to live a worthy life now they were living a bad life only earlier you made them good lifestyle as such you made them healthy as such they did not stop their bad mentality they only became physically healthy their bad mentality remained the same so that is when their intellectual ability is not increased now because you did not do anything for that you did only think for their physical existence you did not do anything for their mental empowerment now when their population is increased why are you worried now the man said what i should do then the monk said you see the tree opposite yes go and sit there the tree which is opposite to me go and sit there and meditate this story came from within me i did not read it anywhere else the indwelling self who is within me inspired me with this story so the moral of the story is the basic problem for the mental strain is comparison 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 competition 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 comparison i am like that monk but then i am not in the forest i am in the middle of bangalore city i am like that man also that man was wishing a welfare of people that way i am like that also i am like the monk also whenever i want i will simply detach from everything else i can stay alone also so if that stability people can develop there is no need to compare anybody with anybody else so go for an introspection if you have an introspection if you understand yourself better then you will not have a mental strain these are the two main reasons for strain now coming to infection food is the basic material for causing infection i have told you much about food now you already know which type of food is better which type of food is worse so food is going to cause infection or the breath is going to cause infection in the present scenario it is the breath which is going to cause infection either stomach will be infected or the lungs will be infected here in this case mental strain head is going to be infected in the physical strain whole body is going to be infected in one way or the other so the solution is for the physical strain take optimum rest for the mental strain become knowledgeable understand life it's a divine gift go for an introspection cleanse your own chitta cleanse your own memory patanjali says yoga chitta vritti nirodha patanjali says yoga is nothing but the uh, restraints of the memory then food develop a hygienic uh, food habit consume only that is natural and nutritious and traditional i have given enough tips as far as breathing is concerned go for regular exercise every day 30 minutes per day keep it as a reserved time for your physical exercise if your lungs are clean if your stomach is clean there is no question of infection point is if you give a space for the germ to multiply definitely it will find a place and it will multiply now let us say you don't give a place for the germ to multiply if the body internally is heavily active with the exercise and then how will a germ multiply any type of germ will not multiply within there is no point in taking vaccines or injections for infection that is not a permanent solution that is only a temporary solution permanent solution is prevention is better than cure permanent solution is daily 30 minutes of exercise minimum and hygienic food 
and stop comparing yourself with others. That is the basic reason for sickness. I have told you a beautiful story today. Let me note down. That is my 13th story. The monk and the man. I am going to discuss some medicines which are traditionally used uh, since millenniums in India. This is called Trikatu. I mentioned about the Trikatu Churna earlier. Maricha or black pepper, Shunti, ginger, Pippali, Pippali. These are called three Katu. Katu means pungent or hot. All these three have a healing property. These three are not food. These three are not food. Ginger you cannot consume directly. This black pepper you cannot consume directly. Pippali you cannot consume directly. But when you make them as a powder and when you make them as a medicine, let us say, they have a, a property of killing the germs. That is why I have told you all medicines are harmful only even in Ayurveda. Even ginger is harmful. If you take more and more of ginger, more and more of garlic, more and more of cloves, that is harmful only. Only thing is, it is antiviral, antibacterial. They have the property of killing the germs. That is why in uh, smaller proportions, these are regularly used in our food habits. In fact, ginger and turmeric, we are regularly using in the Indian cooking. Even the black pepper also we are regularly using in the cooking. What they did is, they had a proportion of these three items and they called it as a three katu and they used it as a three katu churna. There are another three great Indian medicines. Haritaki, Amalaki, Vibhitaki. Haritaki, Alalekai, Nellikai, Tarekai. These are called three fruits or three phala. This Amalaki is rich in vitamin C as such. And this is bitter in taste. Vibhitaki is bitter in taste. Haritaki is bitter in taste. In Kannada, they used to call earlier people as Alalekai Pandita. Alalekai Pandita means this is Alalekai or Haritaki. This cleanses the colon. Whatever uh, uh, Virechana Gutika I told you, Virechana is gutically, Gutika is basically a strong formula of Tripala itself. So, when Alalekai and Tarekai, when Haritaki and Vibhitaki go inside the stomach, they have a antiviral and antibacterial property. They are going to cleanse the uh, surface around them. That is when the intestine becomes cleansed. So, Trikatu and Tripala are the three Three particular items, the basic items used predominantly in Ayurveda. There are so many other churnas in Ayurveda. I am only telling, giving you a glimpse of Ayurveda. What is the question here? What is Pippali in Kannada? Pippali is Hippali. Ashta. So, before going to sleep. Before going to sleep. If you have cough. Or if you have indigestion, consume one teaspoon of Trikatu Churna with honey or warm water. If you have cough regularly, which means your lungs are infected. If you have indigestion, again the stomach is having lesser power to digest. This Trikatu Churna is helping in clearing the cough also. It is helping in increasing the indigestion also. Because Trikatu contains ginger also. So, consume this Trikatu Churna. Before going to sleep, after supper, with honey or with warm water, reduce hurry, worry, curry. Always not be in attention. Don't be hurrying up always. Don't keep on worrying. Don't keep on using the oil fried fruits. So you have to reduce hurry, worry, curry. Then only this trikato will work. If at all you have acidity or constipation problems, swallow one teaspoon of trifala churna. Trifala is going to counteract acidity. More and more of hydrochloric secretion in the body, that is over hunger, excessive hunger. Tripala is going to balance it. If at all you have a constipation, the same Tripala is going to go down to the intestine. When it goes, goes down to the intestine, I have already told you that Alalekai or Haritaki has a great healing property of the intestine. 
so that with triple achurna you can consume if you have constipation or if you have acidity remember this if it is cup for indigestion trika to churna if it is acidity or constipation it is tripala churna or else if you feel that tripala churna is stronger you can either consume neem powder or bitter gourd powder and drink warm water one teaspoon of ghee or isab gol mixed in one glass of milk can also be used as a mild laxative if you have a constipation problems regarding this i had already told you earlier there are some tips i am going to repeat again i have told you already have an early supper before 8 pm sleep at 10 pm eat at 8 pm sleep at 10 pm within those two hours whatever is the food in the stomach it should have passed down to intestine later on intestine keep on absorbing the nutrients so sleep at 10 pm wake up at 5 am 10 to 5 so 7 hours of sleep is in general sufficient before going to sleep urinate and floss compulsorily urinate and clear your bladder and floss your teeth must be clean mouth must be clean if you are of vata type sleep on your back if you are of pitta type sleep on your right side if you are of kapha type sleep on your left side vata type you are airy type you can sleep on your back if you are pitta type when you sleep on your right side Naturally, right nostril will be blocked, left nostril will be open. When the left nostril is open, temperature of the body will reduce. So, pitta means you are already having heat in the body. It will reduce this now. If you are kapha type means your body is already cool now. The cool body should be slightly increasing its heat. So, sleep on the left side. When you sleep on the left side, your left nostril is blocked, right nostril will become open. Gradually, the temperature of the body will increase. Actually, this is the simple principle of Nadi Shuddhi. The pharmaceutical industry does not create cures. They create customers. You know that. When diet is wrong, medicine is of no use. When diet is correct, medicine of no need. When diet is wrong, medicine of no use. When diet is correct, medicine of no need. Ancient Ayurvedic proverb. 10 best healing spices and herbs which we use in our regular lifestyle. You take away this green chilli, you have to take away. I have told you, I simply copy pictures from the internet university. I use it here. He has put this green chilli. I could not crop it up. But there is red chilli is there. This is a healing thing. Even a green chilli, they can, Ayurvedic pundits can use it for medicinal property, not as a food. Now this ginger and this uh, Chakke and this Kalamansu and this Lavanga and this Patre, Turmeric and here Jira. All these other powdered medicinal items, coriander leaves, turmeric, cinnamon, ginger, holy basil, garlic, cumin, mustard, saffron, cardamom, mint. These are the 10 best healing spices and herbs which Indians regularly use in our food. Dear friends, you look at the statistics. In India, the corona affected people out of which the death rate is only 2.6%. All over the world it is nearly 5.8%. You can check with the statistics. And this is a proof that in India because we are using all these herbs in our regular food, Indians in general have immunity. Now, after consuming all these things, if you are afraid, then again immunity is totally gone. Because fear is the basic cause for sickness. If you develop willpower, you will stay alive in spite of all these diseases. Because if the germ goes into uh, your body, if it goes into stomach, it will get vanished there by the hydrochloric acid. If it goes into lungs, keep on practicing physical exercises, expel it out through the warm breath. Make your lungs more warm such that the germ will not survive there also. And in your daily diet, if you keep on using all these items, your blood will have all these ingredients which are medicine. So you are not giving a chance to multiply. You are not giving the germ a chance to multiply within the blood also. So how will you get infected? That is the only way. There is no other solution. Making your body more and more immune is the only way 
and this uh, immunity is not not nothing new it is a very ancient wisdom if at all we are using all these items in our regular cooking how we started using it why your grandmother started using these items because her grandmother told who told her grandmother her grandmother told who told all of them to all of them charaka told in the very beginning charaka told that you use all these items in the regular food as medicinal items only as rare items only that is how we have sambar powder we have garam masala powder we have rasam powder we have varieties of powders all these powders are made up of these healing spices only what else i have been telling the indian cooking is the most complicated cooking why indian cooking is ayurvedic cooking itself nothing else so respect the tradition respect the ancient wisdom and live happily live healthily that is the only way otherwise we don't know in future what all other new types of germs may keep coming out as long as people keep spoiling nature we don't know in what way new germs will be born new germs will propagate how long will we keep wearing masks and moving some day a situation may come where a germ may penetrate to the mask pores also if the germ is smaller than the air molecule right now the present germ is having weight so if it's 6 feet distance is there people if they stay away the germ may not propagate imagine a case when a smaller germ may get produced in future if these people do not understand the divinity of nature if they keep spoiling nature in this way then some day a germ may be still smaller when the wind blows along with the wind if the germ gets propagated even the social distancing also will not work even the masks also will not work even the sanitization also may not work so the best thing is for the people to understand that body is a divine gift and keep it fit with good food and optimum exercise and good rest and have a mental peace of mind that is the only way for any diseases there may be many medicines i have been telling you again and again health is not the consumption of medicines health is the non consumption of medicines so for any diseases if there are medicines now there is a particular disease now for which there is no medicine and they are waiting for a medicine even if the medicine comes also medicine will be only vaccination otherwise virus cannot be killed that way at all if once virus starts multiplying only body's immune force should kill it because virus becomes dormant on its own when it finds a favorable condition it will multiply when it finds a unfavorable condition it will simply become dormant you don't know when it will multiply you don't know when it is dormant so the only way to combat it is don't give a chance for it to multiply let it remain dormant only forever that is when the knowledge of the food is important it's 9 o'clock now with this i'll stop uh, i may not be able to complete my sessions in 10 uh, sessions today is the 9th session tomorrow will be the 10th session but i may not be able to complete it tomorrow i may extend it again on monday 11th session or uh, up to 12th session tuesday because i am not in a hurry to cover anything as such i go with the flow in this way only whatever way i want to speak i keep on speaking this way and uh, i feel that you are also not in a hurry to end it if you are in a hurry to end it you have the freedom to end it at your own end because i never took any registration fees from you and i did not force you to get into my sessions and i told you in the beginning itself that you should have a learning attitude so if you have a learning attitude you can continue tomorrow also monday also tuesday also until i keep on doing it in my own way because this is a one man university and i am the vice chancellor of my university i am the principal of my university i am the hod of my university i am the faculty member of my university i am the one who makes rules for my own university and i believe that you remain my students only if that is the case then you and me will have a harmonious learning and teaching so i am not in a hurry to finish my syllabus as such uh, so mostly maybe monday or maybe tuesday i will be completing this presentation of art and science of eating there is one question which uh, i'll try to answer now after that i'll close
If I drink milk, I get gastritic issues. It wasn't the same two to three years before. I'm not sure what caused this and how to resolve. Okay. If you drink milk, when do you drink milk? That is the point. And which type of drink uh, milk you drink? That is the point. I have been telling that start drinking organic milk. Okay. Change that brand of milk. Start drinking organic milk. That is one thing. And don't drink milk excessively. Later on, I have slides on Rasayana where I am going to tell you. Milk along with the Rasayana where milk will be easily digested. If the milk alone is consumed without Rasayana, then the milk itself is going to cause gastritis. So that is where you should be careful. Okay, next. Can you please share your slides after the class through email? How many times I have told? I have told how many times? Daily I am sharing the link of the video also. I am uploading the video into uh, Google Drive also. I am going to share the slides after my class is over. Only for those people who want to be in touch with me. In my closing email, I am going to tell all that. Until then you wait. How important is coconut or coconut water important to body? I haven't seen any slide. Huh? Why? I have discussed coconut uh, oil in one of my presentations earlier. Regarding coconut or coconut water, if I have to tell you. Tender coconut, I have told you. Whenever you have pitta problem, whenever you have serious uh, heat problem, consume tender coconut water continuously for three days or for one week. That has a healing property. More and more fluid, more and more of nutrition. Especially the coconut water which is having that ganji, sweetish, creamy layer it should have. You uh, consume such coconut only. Don't drink only the water. Some people will say bareneer kodi. Some people will say ganjir or kodi. You ask for ganjirade. And it has a nutrition also that is helpful. Coconut as such is regularly used in our food. That way, that is enough. I will not go into the chemical details of coconut as such. How is the phlegm created in lungs? Phlegm. What is basically phlegm? Phlegm is a battle between germs and the white blood cells. Germs enter into the body through nostrils. They enter into the body through throat. And sometimes they remain at the nostril. Sometimes they remain at the throat. That is where maximum phlegm is there at the throat and at the nostrils. This is basically a battle between white blood cells and the germs. And many white blood cells also die. Many germs also die. And that white blood cells when they die, they release such uh, fluids that is phlegm. So which means if you keep on doing physical exercise, if the nostrils are remaining clean with the clean passage of air then you are not giving a chance for the phlegm to happen in general child age is called as kapha period middle age is called as pitta period old age is called as vata period means in children their lungs are not yet expanded and that is when germs affect the body most that is why the nostrils will be always having fluid there in case of kids in the middle age, it is called Pitta period because in the middle age, people eat heavily. When they eat heavily, that is when they cause harm to the digestive system and that is when heat increases. In the old age, it is called Vata period because people will not do any physical exercise and the gases accumulate in the joints everywhere and gradually that leads into Vata. So that is the simple uh, uh, reason I told you why Kapha, why Pitta, why Vata. If at all you have phlegm continuously, which means that you will have infection of the breathing apparatus. You will have to start practicing yogasana and pranayama. If at all you have to get away with it. Kapalabhati pranayama, kaki pranayama. These are all very useful remedial measures. Otherwise, if you still have phlegm, then in Ayurveda you have something called nasya therapy. I told you about the panchakarma therapy in the beginning. Nasya is one of them. Any way to deal with it, I have told already about it. How can you prepare or where can we get Trika to Churda? What man? You are in Bangalore only, no? Around you, you will have so many Ayurvedic medical shops. Just try out. You have many Ayurvedic medical shops. There it is available. What man? What all types of questions you ask me? Wherever there is a movie released, you know where the movie is released. Whenever there is a new restaurant is there, you know where the new restaurant is there. All the restaurant menu also you people will be knowing. 
you are asking me where trikatucharana is available. I have been telling about Ayurveda, Ayurveda, Ayurveda hundreds of times. Now, wine in small quantity is said to be good for health according to allopathic medicine. Bye bye, madam. Goodbye. Regarding alcohol, I told in two slides heavily. And if you defend that wine in small quantity is good, then please consuming whiskey also, beer also, rum also, tequila also, gin also. You please consuming, don't ask me such questions, please for your own sake, don't ask me. If at all, again you keep on telling about allopathic medicine, which means you have not gone through my earlier slides. The beginning slides you have not gone through. If you keep on asking such questions only, I cannot answer these questions at all. You believe more in doctors, you don't believe in God, then I am not the person for answering your questions. I treat this body as God's gift. I don't believe doctors. My doctor is inside me. From the beginning, I have been telling you that your doctor is inside you. Just realize that. If you still believe that allopathic doctors are great, please attend their sessions only. Please don't attend my sessions. Okay. I'll see all of you tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.